Hey everyone, welcome to Watch It Painter. In this video, we're going to be surprise, surprise, playing with Army Painter's new speed paint range. A lot of people have asked in the comments, what about painting a piece of scenery? What about some flat structures? What about blending? What about adding a dry brush layer? We're actually going to take this piece of scenery and try out a bunch of those things so we can have a look at that. There's plenty of flat spots on these walls. There's areas of lots of bobbly detail, which I think the speed paints are going to work exceptionally well, but we'll try a dry brush over that. I'm going to try some, mm, blending is probably a strong term, but I'm going to try and fade some of these pillars down and, and make them darker towards the bottom, adding a dry brush layer for some highlights, that sort of thing. So we can take that for a little bit of a spin and see how it sits on some of these flat surfaces. I'm fairly sure it's going to be the same as contrast, but we've not tried it. And Essentially, I want to paint this really well using speed paints. This is from a huge miniature. Bonus points if you can leave in the comments below what this piece of scenery, what miniature it's from. I'm sure some of you will know. I'll give you a clue. It is Warhammer, it's Age of Sigma. Anyway, I'm painting the base of that miniature to begin with, and it's essentially a big piece of scenery. Should we have a look how the paints look? Let's. Um, I'm going to make a tutorial, So, and you can see I've already got paints on my hands. I've been testing out a few things and how I think I want this to look. I'm going to try and copy the box art. Not, I'm going to throw this around. I'm not going to show you the box art because I don't want you to know what the miniature is, but some of you will be able to guess, and, and we'll just play around. So the first thing I think I'm going to do is we're going to paint on these little bits of grass tufts, and I'm going to make it look sort of like the artwork and like almost like they're straw like they're dried out they're almost sort of dead and to do so we're going to use army painters mega set the bigger range that hopefully you see mike unbox on the channel it gave us a bunch of extra colors it'll be available in february to uh, to order i think pre-orders are already up but it gives us a color sand golem which i think is a sort of yellowy brown i think it's going to look nice on these tufts so I'm going to whip out my detail brush. It's actually my Redgrass Games size double zero, but any sort of detail, me medium detail brush, because this is not a small piece of scenery. So I don't need to be teeny tiny, insane detail or psycho brushes, that sort of thing. But we're going to take this little brush and we're going to go around all of these tufts and I'm just going to apply the speed paint direct. It's nice and neat, straight out of the bottle. And we're going to just paint all of those in and make them look hopefully sort of like straw-like a little bit. You know, just sort of dead grass on a decaying ground. I should probably add that you probably don't need to be that careful applying this actual layer because the ground I'm going to paint in behind is a lot, lot darker. It's going to cover any sort of misses, but I'm going to take my care just, just in case. But watch the next step, see if it will actually matter. I, I, I doubt it. I'll also mention while I am talking again that I primed this before starting painting using Citadel's Gracia, which is one of their contrast ranges. Uh, hopefully you've seen the experiments using different primers. It doesn't matter too much, and especially on this piece of scenery, it probably won't matter if it's a little bit grainy. But as I already own that primer, I thought, you know, I may as well use it, get it nice and smooth. And if you know what the miniature is going on the top, I definitely care about that bit being very, very smooth when I finish. Just bit my bloody cheek filming that bit. Freaking hurts. You guys, you guys don't know the pain creators go through. If you've ever bitten your cheek, let me know in the comments below. If you've ever bitten your cheek while painting, let me know in the comments below. If you've never bitten your cheek, let me know in the comments below. If you don't have cheeks, let me know in the comments below. So that's the sand golem applied to all these dry tufts. It's looking uh, special at the minute, but we will keep building this up and see where we go. So I'm next going to apply it to this texture, which looks like dirt in the box art. So I'm going to be using Army Painters, again, speed paint, dark wood. And I'm just going to apply it all over. It's going to be much darker than I want, but I think we'll go for a highlight on top of this. So yeah, we'll grab some dark wood, grab the big monster brush actually that came in the kit and just going to apply this quickly and roughly all over this stuff. Get a big blob on the brush. And while my point's nice and tight, we'll just start at the top because that is a little bit tight. I say I was going to do a bit of highlighting up at the end of this. Wish I'd filled this crack. What was I thinking? Oh, well, I say I'm going to do some highlighting at the end. But as soon as I'm applying it, I can see it really dragging off of the, the, uh, the raised area, the highlighted area and running into the recesses, really popping it out. So I see how much highlighting I need to do at the end, but liking it instantly. So this is exactly what I was wanting to apply to this. So I didn't think I had the color I wanted, but 
Here we go, dark wood. Surprising me. Anyone who's used the contrast range already, this will be no surprise. This is applying absolutely beautifully, in my opinion. It's really doing exactly what these paints are designed to do. Speed paint is holding its own here. Uh, I mean, it's just, it's basically this miniature, isn't it? It's very, very, very textured around this part. And it's allowing these paints to really do their work and darken down the recesses, pull straight off the raised bits, popping out those highlights, making this look like it's got light brown areas, dark brown areas, and mid-range areas. It's just doing doing great. I, I love it already. I'm not even nearly done. But I whiz round and just paint all of this stuff in because it's going to take me a wee while. I am trying to be quite careful, but this, this paint is definitely making it easy peasy lemon squeezy. It's almost like cheetah cheese spaghetti eater paint. I'm loving how this is making it ridiculously quick. So that's the dark wood complete. And I like where this is going. That's a very, very quick, very simple base coat. And it's, uh, it's done the effect I wanted a sort of soily dirty look. I'm, as I mentioned at the start of the video, I am going to take this a little bit further. I would like to go above and beyond just a very fast paint job. So I'm going to do some dry brushing and just brighten up this dirt look. And we're going to use Army Painter's Bony Spikes for this. If you're unfamiliar with the colour, it's just a sort of sandy, yellowy brown. Uh, it's just, I think it's going to be quite a poppy highlight to add to this mud. And just really bring this out, drag out the highlights from, from this very, very, very quick base coat, which has already done a lot of the work for us, but I just wanna just wanna see where else we can go. A lot of people have asked in the comments, what about adding a light dry brush to the top? Uh, well, we're gonna find out, we're gonna see here. I think it's just gonna be the same effectively as, do, as doing a kind of a base coat and a, a wash on top, and now we're just adding the dry brush. So the speed paint can just be used to achieve those first two steps of, of a more traditional paint job if we want. And then, you know, some highlights or some dry brushing. Well, same thing, isn't it? But you can do proper highlights or you can just do a nice quick dry brush like this. I'm also gonna be catching, what color was that? The sand golem as well. I think this is a really nice highlight for that as well. I, I mean, I'm just copying the art, artwork on the box to be honest, and they've popped it out with a very similar highlight to this. And I wanna achieve the same look. So I'll go around and I'll just highlight up all of the sand, sand golem, and all of this dark wood. So that's just a quick dry brush over the top of these speed paints, and I'm very satisfied with the results. First time I've tried it, I mean, I was pretty certain that's how it was going to work and how it was going to look. It's no real surprise, but I, f I sometimes forget. I'm so focused on speed paint, and I forget that just a little bit of extra highlighting could really make these pop out and look almost like I've just painted it properly, except it took seconds. So, yep. Yeah, that's what dry brushing over the top looks like and got the effect I'm looking for. Next, we're going to start working on some of these flat areas and we're going to be able to see how well these speed paints stick to that. I imagine about the same as contrast, but nevertheless, we'll take it for a spin, see what we can do with this. And for that, I am going to use Army Painter's Holy White. Now, I don't actually want them to be white and this is a grey and it's going to pull away and leave the edges white. So I'm hoping it's going to make them look a bit more grey stone with some white highlight and we're going to find out in a minute. First time using Holy White myself. Pretty, pretty hyped to see. I think white and yellow are two of my favourites of the contrast because they're hard to paint anyway. So I always like them. Let's see how this speed paint comes out. And we want a big brush once again and we're just going to really try and get this well well covered but like sort of lightly covered i would just want to dull down all of this stonework i don't want to to mega pool in any of the areas because this isn't really going to be even the the recess shading i want i just i'm simply using this as a kind of as a paint a paint that's going to pull away slightly from the most raised parts which i do want to sort of highlight in in a brighter white but i just want to just tone down the whole thing, just make it look a little bit grayer. Now I did use the gray sear primer, so it's already gonna look a little bit gray, which is absolutely perfect. But yeah, just just wanna just wanna give it some some slight coloring. So this for me is gonna be a matter of working up my way around all the remaining white pieces, uh, which are just the remaining uh, stone and just trying to apply this thin coat or thin and even all over it all. And then I'm just gonna let the speed paint do its thing. It'll hopefully pop out some of the highlights for us for free. 
Well, 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 that came out a little bit differently to I expected. So let's have a look at this holy Y. The first thing I notice is where, where, where's the Y, guys? This just didn't seem to work that well as a sort of speed paint, as a sort of contrast paint. It is definitely darker, definitely more gray in some areas, but overall the whole thing's just gone gray. I was expecting brighter edge highlights and it's sort of to pull away like the rest of the speed paints do. I have no idea why this has happened. I shook that paint for a good 10 minutes. It looked very, very well mixed. I knew that could be a problem. So I shook it for absolutely ages. And there is definitely a difference, isn't there? In the recesses, it's, it's much, much darker than it is on the raised bits. There's just, as far as I can see, there's like no bright edge white sort of highlight. It just didn't pull away as expected. I wonder why that is. Having said that though, it looks absolutely amazing. This is what I wanted, a sort of very pale gray with some dark recesses. It's actually almost perfect that I could just leave it. I was going to take this in a few steps further, so I am going to, but you know, look at that. It looks like stony gray. Another thing to point out is the flat edges. It just is pulled really well. It looks dead sort of uniform. Now there are places where I put a bit much on and I noticed that at the time I let it pull along the edge and you can see a little bit of pooling there. It's not perfect on the flat. I, I don't actually think it's that any different to contrast, but it's actually worked out really, really well on this bit. So not sure about the white. I'm going to have to experiment, experiment a little bit more, but I had intended to dry brush this anyway, so it's not going to be an issue and hopefully it's going to look even better. Because of how well this has actually worked on, on making it look like stone, I am very, very tempted to leave it, but I did have a plan. I wanted to try out some contrast. <laughs> Not contrast. I had wanted to try out the speed paint medium. So let's just stick to the original plan. I'm going to take some dark wood, take a drop of that, and then I'm going to take the speed medium. I'm going to take one, two, three, four, five, six, let's go for six. I'm gonna get quite a lot of medium. I want this dead thin. Big brush, mix it together. Little brush, cardboard box. I'm basically going to be using this like, kind of like dirt. I'm gonna be applying this to all of the bigger nooks and crannies, the bigger recesses, the, I wanna say creases, but you know, the stone has increased. What do you call that? The, the sort of indentations? I don't know. I want to get it down as, as though it's, it's it, I'm just going to fill in the recesses. Just going to use this kind of like a wash, but I wanted to play around with this speed paint with loads of medium in, nice and thin, see what this does. Trying to make this stone look a little bit more weathered, a little bit more dirty. I'll make sure I get some going up from the bottom of the pillars and sort of trying to blend it as best I can back into the grey because I'm, it is grey stone. It's just, you know, it's some of that mud seeped up, some of the rain, that sort of thing. It's just, I just want a little bit of weathering. Give us, and, and essentially I just want to see what this speed medium, speed paint medium does mixing it in and, and how we can use that as another tool in our arsenal. I'll definitely get along any bits where the, the stone hits the mud and we'll make that look a little bit more weathered as well as though it's, you know, touching that mud and it's got a little bit dirtier. Well, that's actually worked out pretty good. Pretty nice, quick weathering. There's some places which I think it's looking pretty baller. That's nice, looking a little bit dirty, a little bit like worn down and weathered as anticipated. I really like how this goes to come out. Pretty nice along this bit, a few little bits to tidy up. The actual bits with the skulls I'm not super keen on, but I haven't added that dry brush layer, which I'm going to go on to do now. So I'm going to build up this actual highlight using two layers of dry brushing, I think. I'm going to take about 50-50 Filthy Cape and Matte White, mix those two together, and then get a very, very light grey, hopefully about the same-ish tone. We'll see. I don't mind these highlights sort of popping out more than they do. I might even highlight all the way up to white. We'll find out as, as these layers dry and we see. But yeah, I'm going to take this 50-50 mix and just very... I was going to say very lightly, but I'm just going to medium lightly. I don't mind this being a bit of an overbrush. Just pop out all those details back up to this bright color. I want really poppy white-ish stone. Just trying to leave the dirt in the recesses, some of that shading and some of the lighter recesses. So and that, and, and that but basically trying to bring it up to kind of this color all over, especially along any of the hard edges of the stone and just pop out all the details again and go for some brighter looking stone like in the artwork that you guys can't see unless you know what miniature I'm painting on top of this base. So I'm enjoying where this is going, but I am just going to add just a matte white, just a final one. This will be a very precise, very small uh, amount of paint on the brush, definitely not over brushing here. And I'm just gonna try and get the very edges of 
any of the hard bits uh, and some of the skulls and that sort of thing. Just add a very, very subtle, bright white highlight. Just dry brushing though, not going to edge highlight or anything, although that's essentially what I'm trying to do. I just really pop out the edge of the, these details as best I can. But yeah, it's just going to be a quick, gentle caress moving around the miniature, any of the most raised parts, just bring them up to pretty much white. I didn't clean the brush or anything, so there'll be still some gray on it, no doubt, but I think that should finish this off looking like white stone. Wet, very weathered white stone, I might add. Well, 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 guys, we are completely finished. Now that was just using three speed paints, the speed paint medium and a couple of basic colors just to do some dry brushing on top. And we've answered hopefully a few questions that have been in the comments. How does it look on flat? In this case, it worked out really, really well. I applied it quite thin and you can not you can see the speed paint didn't really do its thing. It's not pulled away from the highlights as much as you would expect. So maybe I sort of just used it as a normal paint, but it worked really well. I think overall it's about the same as contrast really on flat surfaces it is going to pull if you put it on too heavy and don't clean up after yourself. As for the speed paint medium, that's worked well. I thinned down that brown. You can see on the edges of the turrets, I did a little bit of weathering, a little bit of feathering while I was doing it, just a bit of water and blending in a little bit, but it's done a weathering effect. And I honestly spent next to no time on it. and wasn't really taking that much care. So you could get even better results if you put the time and effort in. And then thirdly, I did some highlighting for the first time, just a bit of dry brushing, nothing particularly special, but dry brushing is really quick, really easy. It's another technique where you can add a lot of detail to these miniatures very, very easily. And I think it's complemented these speed paints incredibly well, getting that extra layer of depth with the finished paint job. I'm really happy with this. This is gonna look absolutely fantastic on a massive miniature, and hopefully we'll see that in the near future. As I said before, guys, if you know what miniature this is for, let us know below, show off your skills. Thank you all ever so much for watching, and any more speed paint questions, fire them off below. Army Painters mega set available to us. Hopefully you saw my, 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 so hopefully you watched Mike do an unboxing, a little test of all those colors. And we've now, you know, we've now got, <laughs>